Okay, hello, Eamon Darcy is my name. I'm the founder and operator of QUEQUA, the Quantum Education Centre of West Australia. And we're up to our penultimate lesson uh, on quantum cryptography and one of the most uh, stunning changes that are going to happen in our society will come from quantum cryptography because for the first time ever, we're going to have an unhackable code which is called the BBA protocol, which I'll I'll get to and I'll make sure you fully understand. If you've been to the previous nine lessons, you you should be able to uh, follow what's going on. And here we are. Here are those nine lessons. So we've been through superposition and entanglement, which are amazing properties, forces of the quantum realm. We have the interpretations, including the many worlds theory, that every time there's a collapse, a new world appears. We went through the basics of linear algebra, basically matrix multiplication. We went over the block sphere, which is the visual representation of a qubit in superposition. And then quantum gates are what impacts and changes the superposition, which we can record mathematically as well as visually. Quantum games was the Paris Merman, which is just proves that superposition and entanglement exist because it's a game you cannot win 100% of the time classically, yet you can with a quantum strategy. Then we got on to quantum teleportation. It's amazing. We already teleported a quantum particle from the Earth to an orbiting spacecraft in 2016. And today we're going into quantum cryptography, which I hope you will agree is amazing. This is what you're going to learn, which looks more complex than it is. The whole problem with cryptography is getting a key from Alice to Bob or from one identity to another, uh, which is which an intruder cannot borrow. Because if an intruder's got your password, just like your password to the internet and to your computer, they can get easily in easily. If they haven't got it, they can't. So that's what this actually does by using a combination of classical bits and quantum yes. bits. I'm going to write it all down for you so you can see step by step what happens. But look, in today's world, you know, we're all on the email and transferring money through the banks. And we all basically use an encryption called the RSA. RSA has been used since the late 70s. It means that when you use an ATM, the chances of an intruder getting your PIN is it would literally take the fastest computer on Earth over a thousand million years to get your PIN. That's how secure RSA is. It's based on factorization of very large numbers. And it, it served us well and is continuing to serve us well, but it, quantum computers will break RSA so that they can factor very large numbers almost instantly. And so, as I say, the problem has always been getting the private key from one party to another, which the RSA did very, very well. But now we have quantum cryptography, and that is based on the actual randomness of the universe, because the collapse of the wave function, you might remember, is completely random. When you measure a qubit in superposition, it will revert to two eigenstates, a higher and a lower one, and that's the same as zero and one. And it is completely random. All the scientists in the world are working on this, but we cannot predict or understand how a zero or one is engineered, but it is 50-50. Let me take you through step by step how the BB84 amazingly solves this problem. Okay, as with all security systems, the difficulty is getting a password key that are both complementary and can decrypt the cipher. With quantum computers, you can actually use the randomness of the universe, the collapse of the wave function. And let me explain how that is done. It's called the BB84 protocol. 
But look, with no further ado, let me show you what's called the BB84 protocol. And we're going from Alice to Bob. Now, we use a combination of classical bits and qubits. What happens is Alice has two classical bits, which she can flip randomly, and it'll either be a zero or a one. And she has one qubit that she's going to eventually send to Bob. But she's going to execute certain gates on that qubit, depending on the flip. <clears throat> so, look, there can only be... Uh, oh, let me give you the rules first. The rules on the first classical bit... If she gets a zero, there's no action. There's no action. And if she gets a one, then she applies an X gate to that qubit. Okay. And then when she throws the second class or flips the second classical bit, if she gets a zero, again, she takes no action. And if she gets a one, she applies a Hadamard gate. So an X gate on the first coin, if it's a one, coin bit, and a Hadamard gate on the second bit, if it's a one. Now, you might remember the Hadamard gate from when we are lesson on, I think it was lesson seven on quantum gates. The Hadamard gate puts the qubit into superposition. And that's interesting. The combinations we have, and let's look at the state of the qubit when it's sent to Bob. That's the important thing. So A will be the first qubit, uh, first classical bit, B will be the second classical bit, and Psi is the state of the qubit when Alice sends it to Bob. Now, there's only four combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And the other thing we know is that, let's say, here's the register from the qubit. You may remember from the IBM experience, the qubit is just a, a straight line, as in music. And we're going to initialize it to zero and then see what we come out with when we send it to Bob. Now, let's look at the first case. Right, well, this is rather easy because Alice gets a zero on her first classical bit, so she does nothing. And on the second classical bit, she does nothing. So the qubit is going to stay in state zero. Okay, so on this case, um, Alice throws a zero on the first classical bit. But on the second one, she throws a one. And if she throws a one, she has to apply a Hadamard gate. Now, all you've got to remember is that a Hadamard gate rotates around the block sphere. And it changes the basis from computational to a Hadamard basis. And all that means it changes the qubit from a zero and a one to what we call a plus and a minus. We could call it anything. But all you need to know for this is that a Hadamard gate applied to a zero equals a plus, and if it's applied to a one, it will equal a minus. So what happens is it ends up applying a Hadamard gate to a zero, and that will give us a plus. So let me write that in here. So for the second example, we have a plus. Let's have a look at what we have 
with the third case. So Alice on the first throw has a one this time. So that means she applies an X gate, which moves the qubit into a state one. And then on the second uh, classical bit, she gets a zero, so she takes no action. So we know that the qubit is going to remain in state one and go to Bob, be sent to Bob, initialized to one. And if we have a look at the fourth case, Alice gets a one, therefore she flips her qubit to a one, but then on the second classical bit, she gets a one, so she has to apply a Hadamard gate to the one, and that gives a state of minus. So here are the four states that we send to Bob. But look, Bob also, he has one classical bit, And he will then make a decision how to apply to Alice's qubit. So with the one classical bit, if he gets a zero, then he takes no action. And if he takes a one, he executes a Hadamard gate. Now, that really is all you need to know. But what does this give us? Now we have three different flips of a classical bit, which we can call A, B, and C, C being Bob's. And now we can work out the state of the qubit after all of these. Okay, so there are three classical bits between uh, Alice and Bob. Alice has two, Bob has one. So the combinations can only be the A combinations, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Let's see, that should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, let's see if you can work out what the state of the qubit will be in after these three sequences. Look, because of time, I'll just quickly do them. But if you follow the rules, you should be able to see immediately what each one of these should be. So I'll take the, I'll show you the second one, for example, the zero, zero, 001. So zero, 00 means that Alice takes no action. So the qubit goes to Bob in, in state zero. Bob gets a one, so he applies a Hadamard gate and that converts the zero to a plus. Okay, so what you might think, I mean, that's nice and cute, but it hasn't actually proven anything. What good is it? And what happened was these mathematicians are very, very clever. They noticed that whenever B equals C, so B is Alice's second classical bit, and C is Bob's only classical bit, when they equal, then a strange thing happened. A always equals the wave function. <laughs> so the results of Alice's first classical bit equals the wave function. And we can look at this quickly. Do um, A, uh, B and C equal? Yes, they do in this instance. And does A equal the psi in this instance? Yes, it does. Second one, does B equal C? No, so we don't care about that. 
The third one, does B equal C? No, so we don't care about that. In the fourth instance, does B equal C? Yes. And does A equals Psi? And the answer is yes. And so on. Isn't that amazing? So we have found out that it is true to say when B equals C, then Alice's first result from her digital, uh, from her classical bit equals the eventual outcome of the wave function. So what happens is Alice and Bob check their respective results and if B and C are the same, then Alice will add A to her key and Bob will add D to his key. And they will always be the same, the outcome of his cubit. They will always be the same. So if B and C don't equal, then they discard that qubit. So what happens is Alice sends 100,000 qubits to Bob and Bob, you know, interrogates it. And all he does is keep the ones where B and C are equal and he adds it to his own key. Isn't that amazing? And don't forget, this is all involving the randomness of the Hadamard gate. So that's why no intruder could possibly find out the, the private key. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you at the next lesson.